guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. It's Michelle and it's time to weigh in on the Dior controversy. If you are a luxury lover, if you've been watching luxury YouTube, maybe you've already heard about it because everybody, everybody is talking about it. So it's my turn to weigh in. So what is going on is Dior, LVMH and the Armani groups have been placed on notice by an Italian court. So this is happening in Italy. It's, it's not US news yet. This is happening in Italy. They've been placed on notice for abusing and exploiting workers in a Chinese-owned subcontractor factory based outside of Milan. I have been talking about this for a while, so I'm really happy that it's finally news, that maybe people will start to listen to me as well now that it's in international news that many brands, not just Dior, Vuitton, but many, many, many brands, Nike, H&M, H we already know about those, use subcontractors when they're sourcing or putting together their bags. Louis Vuitton does not have their own Louis Vuitton cow hatchery nursery and their own leather factory. It all comes from somewhere. So now it is exposed that there is actually uh, factories outside of Milan and different places in Italy and even outside of Tuscany. I've done some research on this where Dior, Max Mara, um, all the big brands actually purchase their leather from. And sometimes the subcontractors go so far that there really isn't much of a way for these luxury brands to really know what's going on, where the work is from, how deep the work is outsourced, and how these people are being treated. I'm gonna read from this article from Forbes. While Dior was not held criminally at fault, it is found that Dior was negligent by failing to take appropriate measures to check actual working conditions or technical capabilities of contracting companies. Y'all, this is how corporations work. This is the price we want each bag for. This is what we're going to pay and you're going to make it happen. I don't care how you make it happen. I don't care what you pay your workers. This is the price we want for our products. Otherwise, we will go to another group. So Dior, LVMH, they have this type of power to hold it over the factory owner's heads. If you get the business, in on our terms or no, we walk. That is how it works in almost every manufacturing. I'm just not even almost, that's how it works. The news came out that these bags at cost, these Dior bags cost 56 euros, so that's $60 USD. Retail for around 2,600 euros, which is 2,787 USD. And as far as I know, I didn't know that Dior actually had a handbag that was that cheap because they're now at like 3500 and up for a leather bag so i would like to know but i'm um, just kidding that's probably like a wallet on a chain or something but i've seen in other videos that people say that this is the miss dior but um it's no secret to me i used to be in shoe manufacturing that the leather and the parts they don't cost as much as you think it does but the brand sells you on this exclusivity and heritage and one person crafting the bag for 48 hours. And as I have been saying on my channel, that's all a lie. It's a lie that they market to you. They think the factory looks like this. It's all elegant and dimmed. And one person is passionate about this one bag. But no, it's, it's made just like any other bag, shoe, luggage, air conditioner in an assembly line. So anyways, this article states goes on to state that unethical manufacturing practices are systematic throughout Italy. This has been known that these practices or what they call sweatshops have been systematic throughout China. Uh, we've heard about them in Pakistan, Istanbul, Turkey, and now Italy, which is supposed to be luxurious. Uh, where all the luxury goods are made and my bag is from Italy. So there's no way they could have exploited anybody to get this bag. Well, newsflash, exploitation happens everywhere just because we're here sitting in the U.S. and we don't see it. 
out our window doesn't mean that it's not happening. Now, why do people do it? It's to keep up with the demand and <laughs> greedy corporations. They need to keep their profits high. They need to show an increase in profits to their stockholders every single year. How many times does Chanel raise their prices? How many times does Dior, LVMH, everyone under LVMH, the whole luxury game has raised their prices every single year and we consumers keep paying them. Take a look at this video, the dirty truth behind luxury leather in which this leather tannery, they subcontract most of the work to immigrants. So similar to this factory that they found outside of Milan, that some of these workers didn't even have contracts. Most of the time they're lured in with the promise of a better job and then their passports are taken away. They have no jurisdiction to write a complaint to. They often have no way to call home. These are not luxury conditions. So furthermore, both on this luxury leather factory and this factory that Dior was using, that safety devices were removed so that the workers could work faster. And records show that the factory was running 24 hours. This is actually, it's, it's really saddening. And it is very easy from this part of the world and from our perspective in the nice homes that we live in and the nice clothes that we get to wear, that we are so blind and actually feel like it doesn't really affect me. It doesn't affect me as long as I look good and can keep buying my luxury goods. I started my channel, I talked about how horrible actually I thought it was to work for Louis Vuitton. It was a very toxic environment. And I got some backlash like, oh, wow, well, wow, well, all you have to do is sell bags. It's not right to compare your situation to mine or yours to anyone else. In my opinion, I should have been paid more. Louis Vuitton retail associates need to be paid more for the exorbitant prices they put on these bags, but don't profit share with their own employees who work so hard to get these bags to their customers. The customers that are often super entitled about getting their hands on this exclusive bag. Newsflash, your bag is not as exclusive as you think it is. The thing with these stories, when they pop up, they disappear. These corporations have enough marketing dollars and enough power. And us as consumers, we fall right into it. We quickly forget. So when NAFTA was passed under the Clinton administration, a lot of the fashion industry actually left Los Angeles and left New York in favor of cheaper manufacturing overseas. And that allowed parts to be assembled in Mexico and Canada and other parts of the world, but then been brought back to the US to be assembled or put a label on so they can claim it was made in the USA. This was a huge mistake and ruined manufacturing in the U.S., not just the fashion industry. But here's the history of exploitation when it comes to fashion brands, particularly from the U.S. In 2004, a lawsuit was filed and won by the people of the Mariana Islands versus The Gap. The Mariana Islands have been under U.S. jurisdiction since 1975, and since 1975, the people of these islands have been exploited for their cheap labor and harsh conditions in which they sew clothes for Gap, Target, J. Crew, and Tommy Hilfiger are a few that are named on this list. I believe Ralph Polo Loren was on this list too and many other brands that you might find at Macy's. And because the Mariana Islands are under US jurisdiction, guess what? They labeled these clothes as made in the USA tricking the U.S. consumer to think that my clothes must not come from exploited labor because they were made in the USA, where we have very strict, harsh rules against exploitation of labor. I'm sorry to tell you that this happens. Some of you might say, okay, well, that's from Macy's and I don't shop from Macy's or Gap and H&M because they exploit people. So if I shop from LVMH, that's a, a company in France and they can't possibly exploit people in France. Well, out of sight, out of mind, like again, the further away it is from you, you just don't think about it. But not only do we not think about it, but how quickly do we forget? Let's take a look at Nike. Nike is having a huge boom again 
over the sneakers that they make for $10 and then sell them limited edition for $300 and up and then people clamor for them and then spend over $1,000 for them on the resale market. They have been deceiving consumers for years. They've been accused recently of lying about their sustainability line. They have been accused in the past um, of using forced labor for the cotton industry, running sweatshops, and have been on fire for the way they have mistreated their female athletes and sponsorships. I don't care how popular it is social media, it's just a brand that I cannot get behind. Now here is the luxury lie. Oh, you're buying into history, into artisans, and you're not. These, these brands, Dior, LVMH, Remoa, Cartier, at what point can we just say enough is enough? Do we need to have luxury goods? Because we absolutely don't. We absolutely don't. My first day on the job at Louis Vuitton, my manager said, there is nothing here that anybody needs and we are selling the dream. That's all it is, selling the dream, selling the perception. So I found this article also in Korean Jung Ong Daily because I'm trying to find like a US reaction to this, but I found a Korean reaction designer brands face backlash in korea over production over this scandal and because their demographic for luxury goods is younger they seem to be a little more concerned about these business models that prioritize profits over people but it says around 77 percent of european shoppers say they would be interested in buying designer goods that were produced sustainably. So I already know from just doing this channel that most US citizens believe that because we're paying more, our items are produced more sustainably, which is simply just not the truth. And I don't think people should be saying that I will pay more for a sustainable product because guess what they're gonna do? They're gonna raise the price even more and just make more profits off of it. There is no accountability when it comes to actually paying fair prices when it comes to consumer goods. Quote from the article, when I buy a luxury good, I'm buying the story attached to it. I'm buying the bag that Grace Kelly, Jane Birkin, and Princess Diana carried and is advertised by LVMH as made in ateliers by professional craftsmen. I've always known about the raw material prices. It's unfortunate, but nothing new. So why are we still buying into the story that these bags that were made last month are tied to history that were held by someone who's like already passed and not only that but the brand has been sold from the family to a corporate owner in louis vuitton's case stolen from the vuitton family and now in the hands of bernard arnault what are you paying into you're not paying into any craftsmanship history or anything you're just simply paying a corporation and it's time that we all wake up to that. I know not everyone is going to agree. I would love to hear your thoughts. Is not buying Dior going to solve the problem? No, it's not, it's not. So does that mean you're just gonna keep shopping and ignore that it happened? Because in my opinion, this whole thing is just gonna be swept under the rug and go away and the fashion houses will continue business as usual. Balenciaga hasn't stopped. They haven't even stopped to apologize or whatever they need to do or they can make their apology and keep going on. So I, I would like to know. Click the links below for more information on this topic. I would really like to explore this and put more research into what I'm doing with my channel to keep my viewers informed about these types of stories when it comes to luxury goods and not just luxury goods, but consumer goods. So please subscribe. It lets me know that you're interested in these types of topics. Thanks so much for watching. My name's Michelle and I'll see you soon. Bye.